In this tutorial, we will show how to implement battery storage for the weak grid islanding strategy in simulations of grid-connected systems. Many grid-connected PV systems today are equipped with a battery energy storage system, or BESS for short. The purpose of such hybrid system can differ from case to case. It is customary to preferentially consume PV-produced energy to minimize reliance on the grid. With a storage system, excess energy can be stored and used during the night, and surplus energy from the PV generators can be injected into the grid. However, in countries where grid is weak or intermittent, ensuring electrical availability throughout the day can be a problem, especially during power cuts. Therefore, in the weak grid islanding strategy, the energy in the batteries is aimed solely at self-consumption and will not be fed back to the grid. Furthermore, a certain reserve is kept for the case of grid unavailability. This strategy requires a definition of the consumption profile and of a schedule of a grid unavailability. In this tutorial, we will go through an example using the Demo Residential System project in Geneva, variant VC4, which already has a load profile defined. To start, click the Storage tab. From the drop-down list, choose the Weak Grid Islanding strategy. The load profile must be activated for storage, even if it's already included in the selected variant. Click on the Self-Consumption button to activate it. You can check the load profile in the Graph tab. Once verified, click OK to proceed. Now let's define the storage pack. Keep the generic option for manufacturers and choose the battery module lithium-ion from the drop-down list. PVSYST will pre-fill the fields modules in series and modules in parallel based on the chosen battery pack. This configuration was automatically created based on the daily load profile energy. To the right of the battery configuration, you can see several figures summarizing the properties of the battery pack. The battery pack voltage is rounded to an integer value. The C10 rating represents the battery's capacity when fully discharged over a period of 10 hours. The stored energy at 80% depth of discharge DOD, indicates the energy stored in the single battery cycle. It is important to note that for lithium-ion batteries, the charging cycle should never reach 100% DOD to avoid damaging the battery. The total weight of a battery pack is also displayed, giving you an idea of the physical size. The next line shows the number of cycles that can be performed at 50% TOD before battery reaches the end of its life. Additionally, you can determine the total energy that can be stored over the battery's lifetime. In the bottom left box, you can choose the battery's operating temperature, which is used in the battery's aging model. A 10 degrees increase in the operating temperature reduces the battery's statistic lifetime by half. After defining the battery pack, you will see a red message at the top right, indicating the need to define the grid unavailability. Click on Grid Unavailability. To do this, start by defining the input mode. You can choose to define the unavailability as random periods or by reading a file. In this tutorial, we will use the Defined as Random Periods feature. Next, see the random unavailability parameters. Then define the minimum and maximum duration, as well as the number of periods, or leave these parameters as their default values. Finally, click on Set Random to generate a table of unavailability periods. By clicking on Show Graph, you can visualize the unavailability periods throughout the year. After defining the grid unavailability, you will see a red message at the top right, indicating the need to define the maximum charging power now, switch to the Weak Grid Islanding tab. PVSYST will help you by defining default values for charging and discharging battery power. In the Battery SOC threshold box, where SOC means state of charge, you can define the maximum charging and minimum discharging levels. By default, PVSYST sets these values so that charging stops when the battery is 95% full and discharging stops when the SOC reaches 20%. Additionally, the default value for the minimum discharging for internal consumption is set to 50% SOC, meaning that the user may utilize the battery until 50% of its state of charge when the grid is available. These parameters can be changed by the user. 
The system allows consumption of battery energy below this threshold only when the grid is unavailable. In the Operating Conditions box, you can find information about grid unavailability. You also have the option to choose whether to inject energy into the grid or to use the grid only to cover the load profile, typically at night. The Battery Input Charger box allows you to define the maximum charging power, ensuring it respects the battery's maximum charging capabilities. Similarly, the Inverter Battery to User's Consumption box lets you define the maximum discharging power of the battery. This value should be lower than the charging power. Consult your battery datasheet to determine the appropriate value. Once the grid eyelanding scenario is configured, click OK to continue and run the simulation. You can click on Lost Diagram to visualize the energy solar flux and how well the self-consumption energy needs are satisfied. The energy flux is divided in two. Some energy is stored by charging the batteries, the rest is used directly, either for self-consumption or to feed the grid, if there is enough production. This is the energy injected into the grid during the day. Note that the grid is never fed energy from the storage system. Depending on the battery's capacity at night, one may need to rely on energy from the grid, which is presented in the loss diagram as an external inward flux. Finally, there is a missing energy component due to grid unavailability. This happens when the reserve of stored energy is not sufficient to cover the load for the duration of the unavailability periods. The default values in the storage dialog try to minimize the missing energy loss due to the grid unavailability. You may need several iterations to find the ideal design. By means of the simulation, you will be able to find a balance between the number of PV arrays, the storage capacity, and the percentage of missing energy.